morning. Great to be with you. As always, fair to say the honeymoon may be over for Broward's new sheriff. It has been a hectic tenure for Gregory Tony, put in place by the governor fewer than five months ago. And during that time, the sheriff has been put on the defensive by the aggressive actions of some BSO deputies in several high profile arrests. The one that drew the most attention, the most criticism was the violent takedown of 15 year old high school student Luca Roll and Tamarack. There was an immediate outcry of excessive force and yes, police brutality. The two deputies in the video are off the job and under investigation by the Broward State Attorney. Another deputy is under investigation for punching a man handcuffed to a hospital bed. More accusations of excessive force and the case of a jail inmate named Tammy Jackson who gave birth alone in a jail cell while corrections officers who do work for the sheriff failed to heed her cries for help. An internal affairs investigation is underway into that. And just this week, the parents of 17-year-old Jordan Bennett said he was the victim of excessive force by a BSO school resource officer at Blanche Eli High. Sheriff Tony immediately pushed back on this one, saying the officer's body cam video and other evidence shows the deputy acted correctly and within the law. Broward Sheriff Gregory Tony, right here to talk about all that and more. It is so great of you to come in, sit down with us. We have a lot to talk about. Thank you for having me back, and we do. Yeah. Well, we do, and let's begin with what one attorney this week described as a pattern and practice of BSO deputies abusing black and brown boys. Does that stand up? No, it doesn't. You know, one of the things we've seen uh, is a byproduct of two incidents that had a lot of notori notoriety behind them. The DeLuca incident, and of course, one of my deputies being involved in striking an inmate who was in custody in the bed. Right. Those two incidents stand out and required us to do an internal affairs investigation, but it's not consistently across the board with our BSO deputies being involved in potential exceptions. These are course. anomalies, you These think? These are anomalies, for sure. Yeah. If you look at the amount of encounters we have in the millions with our general public, we oftentimes go without using any form of force. Well, of course, and, and what is news is what's not supposed to happen. That's Correct. That's sort of the, uh, the definition, but let's start with the DeLuca role. Uh, sure. That is the young man in Tamarack, 15 years old, a high school student. Uh, maybe we have the video. Cell phone video is what brings this into the public eye, and watching this cell phone video, <coughs> we don't know what happened right before or right after, but certainly seeing a deputy bang a teenager's head against the asphalt is really disturbing. Uh, what can you say about this tactical use of force to those watching? Sure, well first, anytime I have an opportunity to witness any form of excessive force on the iPhones, just like any general c civilian, we have that cringe factor too. And so when I see one of our deputies involved with taking a young man down to the ground and his head striking, it's alarming. Uh, but it requires us to go through an internal affairs investigation to make sure that was he in compliance with policy was there anything that was beyond, you know, the nature of what we've seen in a very short clip? So yeah. if I could just follow up on that. Sure. So what we, we actually do see a little bit of the before, and DeLuca Roll does not, he's standing there. He is not flailing. He's not appearing to be threatening. And, and because it's an internal affairs investigation, understandably, you really can't talk about much of the detail. Correct. But in a very general sense, when you see something like that, what is on that use of force matrix mm -hmm. that officers are trained to do that we don't know about that might have resulted in what we see? That's, that's a great question and I'm glad you brought that up. It gives me a chance to kind of paint a picture for the general public. When we talk about our use of force policies, there are different behavior patterns that a general civilian may indicate or do, whether it be blading their body or clenching their fist or taking certain posture that allows us to start looking at how our matrix of what can I do, what type of action is gonna be appropriate. And oftentimes you don't get to see all those things because you're not in that first person point of view or the camera doesn't pick it up. Uh, you know, Sheriff, again, there are limitations on what you can say because there is an IA sure. investigation and Mike Sass's office, Broward State Attorney, is looking at this. But you know, one of your deputies, Christopher Krakovich, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, he said in a written report that this boy, a uh, role, 15 years old, bladed his body and clenched his fist. The video does not show that. And so this is part of that internal affair investigation. We not only look at the video footage, but we look at the consistency in what our deputies are writing. 
And so if there's any patterns of this doesn't line up in what's articulated in writing, what video shows, or body-worn yeah. camera, all that's going to yeah. provide me with an opportunity to make a good decision. And Sheriff, what about body cam video from Sergeant Lucera and Deputy Krakovich? Because what is on their cameras, I mean, all we see in that famous cell phone video, you know, is what roughly 25 seconds sure. or so. And that's from another point of view. Cool. They've got video that preceded it, that followed it. When can we see that? Once we finalize the internal affairs investigation and I'm able to come forward and make an appropriate disciplinary action, then we'll put it out. One of the things the public don't recognize is we don't want to put the video out too fast so that it doesn't impact the investigation. There's a lot of uh, young men and women that were there that need to be interviewed and we don't mm -hmm. want to screw them from being able to provide a statement. What, one more question on that particular incident for the context of it. That was mm -hmm. in a, a parking lot of a fast food restaurant right. near a high school. A, apparently, and I've, I've read this, I don't know this firsthand, but dozens of times police have been called to fights between kids. And in this particular time, there was a, a tactical squad in, in what appeared to be, you know, when officers wear military uniforms and bring big weapons. The tactical team was called to what essentially was a fight among teens. It was, what was the context of that? We had intel that there was multiple fights and robberies that occurred out there, and I can tell you from firsthand experience, having responded to that uh, site location numerous times as an officer, hundreds of students show up out there all the time, and we put our teams out there to help mitigate any type of, you know, progression in violence or criminality. So it's not that there's a military-style uniform out there. This is part of our street crimes unit. Uh, they were out there to yeah. prevent any type of added crime t from taking place. Yeah, Sheriff Tony, let's get into the other incident that sure. you mentioned, and we showed some video earlier, and that was on January 1st at a uh, hospital up in North Broward. Mm -hmm. uh, there was this young man, confrontational, agitated, and your deputy, Jorge Sobrino, and you know, this man is handcuffed to the bed and officer, there is Officer Sabrino wails on this guy, walks up, even though he knows the body cam video is rolling, and punches him in the head. Now, what did you think when you saw this? Look, like I said before, if you're seeing something that makes you cringe and appears to be inappropriate, I have the same response. And so that's why I didn't hesitate from hearing about this incident that took place uh, and issued an internal affairs investigation to make sure we hold people accountable. Is he suspended at this point? He currently is, and uh, the internal affairs investigation is now over in the state attorney's office. Yeah. And we had yet another, I mean, it, it, it sounds like, I don't want you to feel like we're piling on, but these are incidents that did happen and that are in the public, and public has a lot of questions, but this, again, young man, a 17-year-old Jordan Bennett, high school student in his cafeteria, uh, there is, I pulled the police report, your deputy responded, um, a uh, school resource officer responded to the cafeteria and we're watching video, again, cell phone video, of what appeared to be uh, the SRO slamming this teenager to the ground. You see his nearest temple is a gash. He, he in the police report is said to have been choking one of the school employees. And so I guess my question is, why wasn't he arrested? And if he wasn't arrested, what did go on to warrant such a takedown? You know, I can tell you from having seen the surveillance video from the school board, which clearly shows that this young man was extremely hostile and flaying his arms and attempted to take on one of the school officials. And my deputy did a great job considering he was five, six and 160 pounds and took this young man down. And this young man was. is a rather brawny young man too, Correct. isn't he? Correct, 6'1", 185 pound student athlete. And yeah. so he was outpowering these deputies and the school employee. Why wasn't he arrested for battery? According I will to tell the you, I think the deputy exercised discretion having spoke to the school board officials who said they didn't want to press charges and that they wanted to see this thing kind of move forward. Now, and my personal opinion behind it is, when we have forms of violence in school, this isn't some minor theft or trespassing, I would encourage our guys to make sure we hold these young men accountable because we open up kind of Pandora's box yeah. for well, violence. Okay, so if, if he wasn't arrested, then how is he being held accountable? Well, the deputy exercised his discretion, and this is part of a new regime, a new model for, look, the deputies that are under my command are operating under a previous uh, mindset and approach, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't want to see anything happen where we jeopardize school officials and allow them to be hurt, harmed, or killed. Yeah. yeah, of course not. All right, hold your thoughts. We've got more sure. questions. Thank you for your candor. We'll be back with Sheriff Gregory Tony in just a minute.
We are back with a fairly wide-ranging discussion with Broward Sheriff Gregory Tony. Sheriff, I just want to sort of continue from the last segment talking about school accountability and this young man, Jordan Bennett, who, uh, according to you, is a bit violent with a school employee, yet there is discretion made. He was not arrested. He, frankly, was not held accountable for those actions. You are the sheriff of Broward County because of what happened at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. That That is not mm -hmm. an understatement or an overstatement. and. And because the MSD Public Safety Commission found that there were serious lack of accountability for disciplinary actions in schools. So how do you now go forward with this kind of behavior as uh, even benign violence, if there is such a thing, and not hold kids accountable or put them in some sort of track where they're not going to be lost in the system and resurface somewhere later in a much more violent way? I think for quite some time, the school board as well as the sheriff's office have been trying to partner up and figure out what type of diversionary programs are going to be successful. And what I've seen since I've taken office is that that process or that relationship has reduced some level of accountability and discretionary practices for my deputies, meaning we're so focused more so on who we're not going to arrest that sometimes we overlook the violent crimes. Mm -hmm. And those mm -hmm. are things that I'm changing is from a cultural side. If we have a young man who makes a mistake and is trespassing or some type of minor miscellaneous offense, we don't want to open up the pipeline and start arresting people for things of that nature. But violence has to be unacceptable. Yeah. Sure. Uh, let's move on to, I, I think, maybe the most appalling incident involving any of your employees. We're talking about corrections officers uh, at a jail facility in Broward. All of the, you know, 5,000 people work for you. Uh, yes, sir. Almost a billion dollar budget. It's a huge operation. Fire Rescue works for you as well. Anyway, Tammy Jackson, 35-year-old Broward woman with a history of some mental issues, uh, was giving birth uh, in an isolation cell at this jail, called out for help at 317 in the morning and no doctor arrived, nobody called 911. She gave birth by herself in this jail cell. I mean, this is just an appalling situation. I can tell you so far, I agree. I agree that it's appalling and what's been on the surface, yeah. but in terms of what BSO, our sheriffs and deputies inside the site locations, what I'm looking at now has been, were we doing our job correctly? And so it's an internal affairs investigation, but there's two sides of it. We also have contract out to one of our vendors who provide the medical services, and right. I'm holding them accountable. Yeah, they yeah. were called. They were called early, and, and it took not. them seven hours to get there. And they failed to perform and, and meet the standards that we have for them. Uh, I know that their president of the organization has already terminated some people, uh, but that may not be enough. You know, we need to examine yeah. what that relationship looked like on their side from policies and practices. Right. I, we understand. I think the question is. At some point, why didn't your corrections officers on duty just pick up the phone and say, call 911 and say, send an ambulance over here. We've got a woman giving birth. From everything I've been able to see so far, our deputies went through the standard checks and balances for notifying the medical personnel. And well, I the think people under, con excuse me, under the people contract. under contract. Sure, but what I would say is this. What I would like to see them do is our contract and um, vendors are not doing their job is to take on the responsibility of just making the right call mm -hmm. and then I can deal with the vendors on the second side of it. Sheriff Tammy Jackson was arrested on March 27th. That was two weeks before this incident. Fully full-term pregnancy on March 27th. I is it standard operating procedure to put a full-term pregnant inmate in, in a solitary cell? From my understanding, uh, we normally have all the different pregnant uh, females or so in one area as a group, uh, but Tammy had become somewhat agitated and hostile and creating conflict internally, yeah. so they had to isolate her. Yeah. Hmm. Um, if we can, I want to move on in the time remaining. Uh, sure. I want you to explain there is a tremendous new training facility. Training, of course, came to the forefront after the Stoneman Douglas massacre. Uh, for lack of training for uh, active shooter, but there's training for all kinds of scenarios and sure. you're building a fantastic new facility. Tell us about this facility for training. Well, the facility is going to supplement all the different training initiatives uh, since I've taken place. We added in more active shooter instructors. We now have an entire cadre of nationally certified 
uh, personnel that can teach these protocols for not just Broward but throughout the county. That was your business right before you took this job, was it not? It was part of some of the training I was doing across the country, correct. Right. And so now we have a training center that's going to allow us to keep up with all the different practices and have a modern center because we haven't had one since over 100 right. plus years. Yeah. All right. In, in the in the minute remaining, I do want to just congratulate you on Monday of this week. <laughs> You and uh, one of your associates, was you were driving down to a meeting uh, with a county commissioner about your budget, your department budget, and you saw this kid legging it out of a 7-Eleven on Broward Boulevard. Just briefly, tell us about this incident. Well, you know, we had a chance to talk already, but yeah. at the end of the day, I'm, I'm a law enforcement officer, and so if I'm going to have a standard that my deputies perform and do their job, it's probably important for me to lead from the front. And so I saw a young man running out of store, and... I haven't been a detective in a long time, but it was kind of a clue. I was able to chase him down, apprehend him, and, and end it on a good note, where there's a, a little bit of mentoring provided to the young man, yeah. uh, and I think he finally gets the point. How'd yeah. you do? Did you do a good job? I caught him, didn't I? <laughs> right. I still you, have some good wheels, Glenn. And you cuffed him, and there was no physical harm, and he was taken over to the Correct. jack. Uh, not every arrest requires use of force. Yeah. Sheriff sure, Greg Tony, great to great have to, you come in. Thanks for Excellent. your Thank candor you for and for your presence. Up next, we have a lot to talk about with the roundtable. Stay tuned.